so now I'm going to start the intro to CTFs workshop. This workshop is more geared towards like beginners or people that are new to CTFs. So we'll go ahead and jump right into it. So here's some useful links, like mentioned before. We have the homepage, team registration, LACTF Discord, and schedule all on our website, lac.tf. And yeah, let's start with what are CTFs. So they're basically hacking puzzles. Oftentimes, camera on. <laughs> okay. Um, they're oftentimes like team based. You can work in a team or compete individually to win prizes. And they're great for testing your problem solving skills and like a really good learning opportunity to learn new tools and skills. And LECTF is great because it's suited for all experience levels. We have challenges and events for everybody, no matter if you've done CTFs all your life or this is your first one. So CTF challenges, you're, off, you're usually given a prompt and a set of resources, and you need to exploit some sort of vulnerability to find a flag. And it's going to be a string of text just like this, like LACTF with curly brackets around some text. And they usually come in the form of a file, program, website, etc. And there's a lot of different ways to break things. So you'll be able to learn about that during this. And there's a couple different challenge categories. We have web exploitation, reverse engineering, binary exploitation, or pwn. Uh, we also have cryptography, OSINT, file memory, forensics, and more. And you're able to identify different challenge types with this link. So yeah, first I'll talk about web exploitation. So the common format for these types of challenges is you're given a web link, or it involves HTTP, PHP, JavaScript, SQL, curl, netcat, etc. And some common vulnerabilities you may find in these challenges are XSS, CSERF, XQL injections, etc. And here's some resources links. We'll have the slides probably put on, on the Discord or something, so you can click these links later. But yeah, here's some attack payloads and just some resources for SQL injection. So I'll also be doing some walkthroughs or some quick walkthroughs about challenges that we had at last year's LACTF, so LACTF 2023. So we'll start with this one, which is one of the easier challenges in our web category last year. So this one's called College Tour, and you basically click on the link and see this following website to the right, right here. And basically, you just use Inspect Element to just explore all the code that makes up this website. So as you can see in the screenshots on the left, like you'll find six different parts of the flag, like within the HTML or the CSS or even in the JavaScript file. And if you put all them together, then you get the flag in the bottom right corner. So easy as that, right? And next I'll talk about reverse engineering. So the common format for these types of challenges is finding a flag in a program or modifying its behavior in unintended ways. Some resources for this are GDB and Jeff, which are like debuggers. And also uh, Binary Ninja or Binja is a really good resource for this also. We have all these linked on the slides. And so a challenge from last year that uh, is part of like Rev is string cheese. So basically you're given an executable that asks you, what's my favorite flavor of string cheese? And you put in some text, press enter, and then if you guess the correct answer, then you get the flag. If not, then you don't get anything, right? And we can't really guess the correct answer without learning more. So you're able to kind of look at the executable. And if you look at the challenge name, it's called string cheese. That kind of implies you should use the strings command. And if you run that, it brings out all the text from a binary file. So you can see on the bottom left corner, it gives out or it says, what's my favorite flavor of string cheese? And then the next one is blueberry. So if you put in that, you get the flag, as you can see on the bottom right hand corner. Okay, I'll also talk about binary exploitation or pwn. So the common format for these types of challenges are finding the hidden flag in a program or modifying the behavior of a program in unintended ways. So pretty similar to Rev, but still different. You can use these following resources to like disassemble the executables using object dump. And then also you can use debugging with GDB. You could also use Gija for some reverse engineering help. And we also have some uh, references here for using x86-64 and understanding buffer overflow. So yeah, the or a an example challenge from last year's LACTF is this one called gatekeep. So if you look at the source code, you can see that the program used the get method. So you can see on the bot, on the left side, it has like a certain buffer size, and then it says that the password is random. So if we try and do this without buffer overflow, we'll never figure out the password because it's random every time, like it changes every time. 
And then on the right side, you can see the gets input command. And this doesn't do any like input validation. Like it doesn't check that it'll stay within the buffer size. So this implies that it's vulnerable to buffer overflow. So if you basically put in a string that's like bigger than the buffer size, then you're able to set the access equal to one, which gives you the flag. Okay, next I'll talk about some resources for cryptography. So a common format for this is like jumbled files such plain text, which is meant to be decoded for you to get the flag. So some good resources for this are using decode for basic encryption. And then you could also use CyberChef for data manipulation and use Hashcat for hash cracking. So yeah, some of these have a bit of a steep learning curve. So definitely check out some tutorials. You'll be able to learn more along the way also. And so yeah, a challenge from last year is this one called Rolling in the Mud, where you're given this following PNG, which looks like a, pink, a pig pen cipher, which you can see on the right side. But if we try decoding it, the plain text doesn't make any sense. But then if we take a closer look at the PNG, we see that the flag format isn't right at all, because it's supposed to be LACTF and then curly bracket and then a bunch of stuff and then curly bracket. So this kind of gives you the idea of like, what if you flip it upside down into something that looks like this? This looks more like manageable or something that would be correct. So if you now decode it using this kind of orientation, then you get the following flag in the bottom right corner. So yeah, and then we'll also talk about some miscategory re uh, resources like forensics. A uh, common format for this is to examine like static data files to find hidden pieces of information. You can use the file command to figure out like what kind of file you're working with. And there's a lot of different resources for these kinds of challenges. You can use Wireshark for PCAP files. You can use Autopsy, Exif tool. And then you could also use Binwalk for file carving or Volatility for memory dumps. And we also have some Linux resources linked here, which are pretty helpful for almost any CTF challenge. So we have some resources for Windows and Mac OS here, and also just for basic Linux commands and Linux tutorials, and also for bash scripting, because all these are like really helpful skills to have for going through CTFs. And so, yeah, I'll talk about this quick OSINT challenge that we had last year. So you're basically just given a bunch of, or a JPEG of a bunch of cats and you must OSINT the location, which means using like open source intelligence or using the internet to figure out where it's from. So you're able to use a bunch of different approaches to this. I've seen people use pick to map to figure out the location of or where the image was taken. But I just use Google image search, which both give you the same answer of the Lanai cat sanctuary. And so, yeah, I also linked some useful resources for CTFs for all categories. These are more general. So, of course, you can look at ACM Cyber's past talks. And we have also a PBR wiki, which is made by our um, competitive CTF team that has a lot of resources for these kinds of challenges. And we also have a bunch of other links here for all different kinds of categories. So you should definitely look at these if you're stuck. And yeah, here's just some more tools for uh, like some tools and resources for Python and security assessments, a lot of cool stuff if you have some time. And something else I would highly suggest is documenting your process. One, because we have write-up prizes for if you make a good write-up, there's a good chance you'll win some prize money from us. But it's also a good way for you to learn and like remember what you did when you were solving these challenges. So yeah, CTF write-ups are a great way to document and explain the process of how you actually captured the flag. And yeah, uh, finishing off this, I just have some general tips. So this is like definitely, or you're able to use free and open source tools. So be sure to use Google, Stack Overflow. Like there's lots of resources that you can use online. And I would also definitely suggest to try and learn something new and to also ask questions. Like we're here to help and learn together. So definitely ask questions and solve challenges together with like other people, right? We also have our hint section, which is happening tomorrow. So definitely come to that if you're having any issues. I would also suggest like figuring out one topic that you're really interested in and just trying a bunch of challenges from that. Or you can try a bunch of different categories, like whatever you want. And yeah, most important thing is just have fun. You know, we're here to have fun and learn. So that's just priority number one. So yeah, finishing this off, I'm going to talk like a little bit about team building. So if you're left without a team right now, that's totally fine. I would definitely suggest joining the LACTF Discord. I think we have a channel just based on team building. 
So you can compete individually or with a group of people, but be sure to have like a clear channel of communication so you're able to talk with your group members. And yeah, I just have like a couple more rules to finish off this talk, but um, each member can only be part of one team and then it has to have a valid email address and you're able to compete either in the UCLA portion or the open division, but not, not both. And then for the UCLA division, it's only up to four undergraduate UCLA students, while the open division, the teams can be as big as they need to be. And that is it. Thank you for listening. Uh, so if you're someone in person with us and you need some other folks to join your team, uh, feel free to come up to the front and meet some of the other organizers and some other folks here. We'll help pair you guys up with uh, whoever sort of might be available. Uh, if you're on the Zoom, uh, feel free to uh, chat amongst yourselves and see who might be interested in forming a team as well. Yeah.